This video explains the entries you need to make to complete your state's financial affidavit. You begin on the Client Info tab, and it's all of these links below child support. So, background on child, form information, income and expenses, assets and liabilities, and, if applicable, pension plans. We'll begin with the first one, background and child. One thing that's worth mentioning before we dive in is that it is possible to go straight to the financial affidavit on the reports tab and start banging in information there. But we really suggest that you not do that. We really suggest you enter information here on the client info tab. And there are a couple of reasons for that. First, information that you enter here will flow not only to the financial affidavit, but also to child support guidelines and to the all important tax calculation. Also, you'll be able on these screens to enter information for the property division. So you're getting a good running start on your property division as well. And third, based on these entries, the software will be able to do cash flow projections that can be really helpful to clients as they're looking forward past the current moment. All right, so let's dive in. So the first screen is this background and child screen. You want to be sure to open each party and complete the information for the party and then open the section on children and complete the information for the children. If you've already entered the information for child support screen, you'll see the information is already filled in here. Next, let's go to the Form Info screen. Not every state has one of these, but most states do. And this is the page where you're entering all the information that is not financial information for the current year. So it's text information like information about the party's employer, it's information about prior years, it's information about the name of the health plan, and so on. So you just fill this in here, and it will carry to the financial affidavit. Every time you see this button here, you can click it and enter a footnote for the item. And every time you see the question mark button, you click it and you can get help on the item. The next screen is income and expenses. So let's go there and do that now. This screen you'll see has five tabs across the top. Wages and deductions, wage like income, real estate expenses, living expenses, and income from assets. And we'll look at each one in turn. Wages and deductions is focused on the kinds of things you might find on a current pay stub. So you would enter gross wages and possible payroll deductions. There's also an option to enter hourly wage instead of weekly or annual wage. Also on this screen, as with most of the screens in this section, there are different views. The current view is the both view in which we see each party and all the entries are monthly. We can select either Pat or Shelley individually, and then the entries are weekly, monthly, and annual. So that's the entry for wages and deductions. The next screen is wage like income. This is going to be child and spousal support of prior relationships, overtimes, commissions, tips, bonuses, and all the other income that a party could have. And as before, if you want to enter a footnote, click this button. And if you want help, click a help button. The next section is for real estate expenses. I can click this button to add a real estate property and I can fill in the information about the property. So I enter the name of the property, the value of the property. I can enter the percent of the equity in the property that will be kept by the party. That's never needed on an affidavit so I can keep that blank the first time through. I enter the mortgage balance, the monthly payment, the interest rate, and then I, I specify who pays the mortgage. Then I specify who is likely to pay the expenses. Are they likely to be paid by the first party? by the second party or split in a certain percent. And then I enter the total expense amounts on a weekly, monthly, or annual basis. So I can enter the real estate annually. I can enter the gas monthly and so on. And the software will compute all the other time periods and also compute the amount that is being paid by each party. Now for any particular item, I can override the division. So let's say the real estate taxes are actually being shared 50-50 even though all the other items are being paid 100% by PAT, and I have the ability to do that. What's nice about this is that I'm preparing the expenses not only for one party, but for both parties at the same time. And then I can use this to help the parties negotiate things like a fair spousal support amount or payment of other expenses by seeing what both parties' expenses are going to be at the end of the day. Next, I enter living expenses, which is all the expenses that are not real estate expenses. And I open each group and enter the expenses for the item in that group. And finally, I enter income from assets. And this is often thought of as passive income, interest dividend income, etc. 
I can enter business income, rental income, and other kinds of income, and also payments related to assets. So payments on debts, life insurance premiums, and IRA and 401k contributions. For each item, I click the button to add another, and I enter the description and other fields that are requested. I then can enter footnotes for the item as an asset. These will flow to the asset section of the financial affidavit, or as a payment, and these will flow to the income and expense section of the affidavit. So that completes the entry of income and expenses. Now we want to enter assets and liabilities or assets and debts. Again, we click the client info tab and we click assets and debts and that takes us to this screen. Let's start at the top of the screen. There'll be some options relating to data entry. Do we want to show fields for the financial affidavit, which you would do if you were an attorney or filling in the form for an attorney? or a financial plan, which you would do if you were a financial planner or filling in the form for a financial planner. Also, do you want to show fields for separate property or the valuation date? That may depend on your state and also on the kind of case that you're filling in. And finally, there's a section on how do you want to default the percent that the party is going to keep? Now, typically there's no default, but sometimes you want to default that every asset will be kept 50-50, or you want to default that when you select the title of the asset, that will determine who keeps the asset. In any event, this is just the default. You can always change who will keep the asset on an asset-by-asset -asset basis. Now let's close this section up and begin entering information for our assets. We already entered a real estate property and we entered the income-related items. Now we can enter the asset-related items, such as which party is retaining title to the asset and whose financial affidavit should this go to. If you leave this one blank, it goes to both parties. And if you leave the title blank, it is considered to be a joint asset. As always, you can click this More Info button to go to a screen that gives you more information about the asset. And let's go back. Or you can click this button to enter a footnote for the asset. And the footnote will appear on the financial affidavit. And that's basically it. We'll just add a couple of notes about a couple of particular asset classes for investments checking accounts, etc. You want to be sure to fill in the investment type. That will determine where the item carries on the financial affidavit. What's great about this is that you can change the investment type at any time and the software will automatically reshuffle the item and put it in the correct place on the affidavit. Similarly for debts, you want to be sure to enter the debt type, which will determine where the item carries on the financial affidavit. The asset types and debt types will vary from state to state depending on the categorizations on your state's financial forms. For a business, you want to be sure to click the More Info button and fill in information relating to qualified business income for the business. And finally, define benefit pensions. This is a special kind of asset, but you can enter the information at the top level and the software will, using standard assumptions, show you the value of the plan it is really as simple as that. But then what you want to do is you definitely want to click the More Info button and go through the entire screen and make sure that the standard assumptions apply and if they don't apply, that you enter the information that does apply in this case. When you have finished entering your information, click over here to the Reports tab and then select your state's financial affidavit. And in some states it will appear just like this. In other states there will be an intermediate page with the different sections of the financial affidavit. And all the information that you entered previously will carry here and be displayed. When you're ready to print, click the PDF button at the top and the financial affidavit will be downloaded to your computer. If you're using the desktop version, it will be saved in the same folder that your case is being saved. And that's our video for completing the financial form for your state and family law software. Thanks for watching.